landfills in Connecticut are almost extinct. The trash that used to go into landfills in Connecticut now gets shipped out to Pennsylvania and Ohio. Um, those landfills, four or five years, they'll be closed. So what do you go out to North Dakota? <laughs> You're going to have to handle this trash a more effective way. Um, and part of that is eliminating trash. So you do your composting. You recycle everything you can possibly recycle. And then what's ever left over, which should be minimal, then you can burn that. misconception is that we already compost here at Wesleyan and that um, sort of when you put your tray or like your plate on the tray return that you know that material is being disposed of in a sustainable manner which it's it's not Composting as a student initiative had sort of um, fallen through the cracks a little bit. I, it used to um, run under a student group a couple years ago, but then uh, for whatever reasons, it, I think, you know, with people going abroad and people graduating, it sort of just dissolved on campus. My past experiences with the composting initiative were varied. I found that the, um, the, the pickup of the scraps you know, the regularity of that, the consistency of that was kind of lacking. You know, we serve just about over 200 people a day here, so you can imagine the veggie scraps we generate when we're composting. I mean, it's a, it's a ton, it's buckets and buckets. Fruit flies started flying in the kitchen, black flies came in, and at the same time, the compost wasn't getting picked up, you know, on a consistent enough basis. So that's kind of like what, you know, what started the frustration for me with the composting initiative. Um, composting to Wesleyan started about five years ago and that worked for a little while but it didn't work very well because people were confused as how they worked. the squirrels kind of took over um, the, they got knocked over and the lids were missing and so that that program kind of lost steam a little bit we made a change two or three years ago we told them that we would pick up their compost and it was a student initiative and then the, one of the things that I didn't realize was that whole midterm, finals, reading week. There were times where we had laxed in picking up um, the containers from, from the area restaurants that we had clearly told them that we would do that for them. And so we understood that we had dropped the ball on our end. My name is Corey Gelmet. I guess I'm the chair of the composting committee. I guess I sort of restarted the composting committee in, was it September? Um, the idea for it. I think was generated last April. I know Melody and I both had interest in it and we were originally both running it. I sort of took on a little bit more than she did. I think our committee's greatest success or I think what I've been most surprised about is sort of how our, our ability to get student participation in composting and get the buckets out to, I think it was 180 housing units which represents somewhere between 800 to 1,000 students. Involvement fluctuates with the committee. The committee generally meets every week, but I mean, generally I think the, the most essential things that, that we do on the committee are, um, I mean, the discussions during meetings about how, where, where we're at and where we're going and how, how best the system can evolve. We're in the forefront of sustainability and food services. There's a push and Melody has been very um, working hard trying to get um, the post-consumer waste composting going here. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of hurdles to the post-consumer waste uh, composting. The difference between pre-consumer compost and post-consumer compost 
the pre-consumer is essentially it's the the cuttings you know the tops of the carrots and the bits and pieces of the asparagus that that the chef didn't want to use comes out of the kitchens before it's ever presented um, in in the dining hall post-consumer is even a bigger uh, project dumpster that we use is enclosed in the building um, that means there's going to be a lot of post-consumer waste is going to have to be stored somewhere. There's things that have to be worked out. Um, where, where's the post-consumer waste going to go? Who's going to pick it up? How much is it going to cost to bring it to point A, B, C, wherever it's going to go? Um, these things are still in the works. The ideal situation would be that it would be picked up on a daily basis. You know, again, now there's a cost factor. Who's going to do that? Dainty's not going to do it for free. You know, they're in business to make money. So their biggest concern is uh, having the waste collected, the compost, the post-consumer composting, so that it's not rotting, you know, basically less than 100 yards from the kitchen. Um, so that's something that um, we've talked a lot about in terms of how that material is going to get collected. The real problem with sustainable initiatives on campus that are student run is that um, you just can't rely on them with any um, sense of comfort that the project will carry over from year to year in terms of you know people going abroad people graduating bill has been in contact with dainty who is our our waste management provider so they collect all of our trash and all of our recycling already um, and they're willing to collect our composting material it's just figuring out the schedule so when when we question could we run our compost program better if we had an outside vendor managing it or helping us to create the compost? Um, I think the answer would be no. I think we would just be wasting our money. I think we have to take responsibility for our own solid waste. Somebody has to move that trash can full of material. Somebody has to take care of that compost. And it might as well be the person that created the waste stream to begin with. Um, I think just hiring you know, that's the problem we get into when you have a trash company on campus that just comes in, all they do is empty the trash cans. Nobody takes responsibility for what they throw away. As a permanent entity, having composting be entirely student run, I don't think that's possible. The most limiting factor is sort of how many students we have who, and how much time they can commit. I don't want to be thought of as the person running composting. I don't really want a definite group of people to be thought about as running composting. I think I see the sort of oozing and composting thing as something that students need to push to have done and help work to make sure it ha happens. But ultimately, I think once it happens, student involvement and in keeping it happening should be minimal, probably like not no involvement. As far as who runs the composting on campus, um, you know, I, I feel like it, it might be more successful if it was like maybe contracted out to a company that solely deals with that. However that would work, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think anybody should be paid for it. I think it should be something that we all do. The composting committee, I think, has done a really good job this year. But I think we need to keep the composting program, the solid waste program, needs to stay in-house so that those of us that are creating it take the responsibility for the end product, for, for getting rid of it at the same time. We sort of had ideal notions. We are too idealistic in, in going into the project. I definitely think that we've been hugely su successful this year, um, and I, I don't want to sort of like undermine that by saying that there could never be a student-run, totally student-run initiative. I mean, it's definitely something that we, students can't do alone um, and shouldn't do alone because it should be, you know, a concern of everyone in our community about sustainability and about composting. Wesleyan students have the ability to be the most sustainable students in the country. I have no doubt about that whatsoever. We have the ability within us to be extremely sustainable, to be kind of the pilot ship.